If we flip it over down to the other side, Josh Allen, here he comes. The fifth year in a major spot, and I think as far as pressure is concerned, I mean, yeah, I, I would say the Bills overall, they have the, more, they have the most pressure than any team in the league, obviously. Let's talk about players, though, single players. There's a handful of guys that have an immense amount of pressure on this year. Josh Allen being, I say, right up at the top of that. Because out of all these guys that Josh Allen's categorized to be in with this in, within the group now, right, Aaron Rodgers, Mahomes, Brady, that's kind of where he seems to fall now, and he's often in that fourth spot. The pressure's on because it's kind of getting to the point where people are expecting, okay, what are you going to do now to, to ascend into that realm and prove that you, need, that you deserve to be there? I mean, we've seen incredible play, but the rest of them have MVPs. They have the Super Bowl, whatever. Josh Allen comes into this season with the best roster that he's had, the best roster that he could potentially ever have. And in this spotlight, it's never going to get bigger on an opening weekend. And this defense for the Rams, as we know, is no joke. The one thing that I think is the standout as far as offense is concerned is the guy that Josh Allen, of course, is going to be relying on the most this season. The guy that he's relied on the most since he's come to the team. Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs has not had the best outings when he has gone against Jalen Ramsey. And we know Jalen Ramsey in all pro at his position, one of the best in the game. He has had his fair share of success against Stephon Diggs in their two matchups. Diggs has only been targeted four times when he's gone against Jalen Ramsey. Only two of those four targets resulted in catches, and only those two catches resulted in nine yards. He did wind up scoring a touchdown in that game back at the one I was talking about where they were running away with it in the first half. But that matchup, I think that that's music to my ears. Because you want to know what that tells me? It's Gabe Davis time. I think this coming Thursday, huge opportunity. You want to talk about a guy this offseason who's had his name being spewed left, right, and center as far as, oh, Gabe Davis. This is the year. You saw what he did in the playoffs. You saw that epic, legendary, record-breaking performance against the Chiefs. Could he not be one of the biggest stars as far as young wide receivers are concerned in this league this coming season? Here's your opportunity this coming Thursday. Because Jalen Ramsey, for the most part, is going to be ghosting Stephon Diggs. Fine. That is ultimately one of the biggest factors when it comes to having a guy like Stefan Diggs and that's why it means so much to have an adequate core surrounding a solid wide receiver one you expect your wide receiver one to be dominant which Stefan Diggs is there's only a handful of wide receivers in the league that are in his realm but the benefit of having a guy like Stefan Diggs goes well beyond what he does when the ball is thrown his way he's going to be opening it up for the rest of this squad. And I think the Rams, they do have a solid backfield to be able to try and contain it, right? David Long, Troy Hill, not to mention, we'll get into their D-line in a minute, but not even to mention that. But you can only do so much. And I think when you look at Ramsey versus Diggs, it's about as world-class as it gets as far as position versus position is concerned. And oftentimes that positional battle is won by the corner or the D back in general because of the quarterback's lack of targets thrown to that receiver. I mean, that's usually how it goes. That's why that corner winds up winning the battle a lot of the time. Because the targets just aren't there. I mean, in four games, like I mentioned, Stephon Diggs has only been targeted four times. It's because you'd rather not throw the ball towards Jalen Ramsey's way. Oh, God, that felt so good. Sorry about that. Oh, my God, these allergies. And I, I, when I was out in uh, the gorge this weekend, it was, everything was just like dust. You're walking there and everything's dust and they're just kicking up. I got like so much damn like red rock dust in my throat right now. Oh, and I'm just ranting here. I'm getting going. God, I'm so fired up. 
But when you look at that matchup, right, uh, in particular, I think that that is why it often gets, it gets pushed towards the D-back. The quarterback's just less likely to go his way. But when you look at what the Bills have, that's fine. I don't need Stephon Diggs in this game to rack up a career day. We get to see what Jamison Crowder brings to the table. Isaiah McKenzie looks to be healthy, full participant in practice. We get to see what he could potentially be in a much bigger role this coming Thursday. What kind of burn does Khalil Shakir get? That's going to be interesting to me. But the big one here is Gabe Davis. I think that Thursday night, Gabe Davis truly has that big opportunity to solidify himself as that wide receiver too, that undeniable wide receiver too that we all expect him to be this coming year. This is a big opportunity this coming Thursday. Super, super excited to see what could potentially be brought to the table by Gabriel Davis this coming weekend. And then down in the trenches, right? Yes, you have Leonard Floyd. Yes, of course, you have Aaron Donald who's going to have to take up half the line just to block him. But I think that that yeah, I mean, you're, you're never going to have the upper hand when you're going against Aaron Donald. But the one thing that the Bills have that everybody else doesn't, or at least, you know, 95% of the league doesn't, is Josh Allen. And that goes, yeah, you could say, oh, you have Josh Allen. Yeah, he's a great thrower. He's great. He's great. It goes well beyond that. When you're talking about playing a, a legitimate, like you're basically playing Zeus, you know, you're basically playing Thor out there and Aaron Donald. Well, Josh Allen's a bit of a Thor himself. He is able to get out of situations in which Aaron Donald would be able to feast on other quarterbacks in that particular spot. Aaron Donald feasts on guys who stay in the pocket, who aren't able to get outside of the edge, who aren't able to run, let alone guys who aren't able to stiff arm, who aren't able to absolutely truck stick. Now, is Josh Allen going to truck stick Aaron Donald? I would say no. Then again, though, I wouldn't put it past him as far as giving it a try. I mean, we, we know he's not going to go down without a fight. That's for sure. But Josh Allen will not make it easy on a D line in the Rams that most people expect to constantly be a dominant force every single night. Aaron Donald can have his way against the majority of the league, but not against Josh Allen. Josh Allen, his ability to move, his ability to run, and his ultimate physicality are what I think is a big Achilles heel for a guy like Aaron Donald. It's not that he isn't going to be able to get in the backfield. It's going to be, are you going to be able to get your hands on Josh Allen? And if you do, are you going to be able to bring him down? Much easier said than done. Much easier said than done. I wonder in this game coming up here, if the, if the ultimate goal is to try and get the ball out quicker than usual. Another thing that comes into Thursday night that's going to be exciting to watch that we've yet to see yet is is what we see out of Ken Dorsey and what could potentially be different out of this Bills offense than we've seen in the past, right? We've been talking about this all offseason. What's the difference going to be with Ken Dorsey? And I know that there's people, I shared this story with you about Chris Sims and how he had thought that maybe that could be a concern for the Bills this coming year. But I look at it as the complete opposite. I mean, you know, Ken Dorsey's been in this locker room with Josh Allen for as long as Brian Dable has, he's been in the room. He's, he's the perfect fit for this OC position. Didn't go outside of the facility. You stay right there with a guy that had as good of a relationship with Josh Allen as anybody did in that front office. And I think he's going to bring a spice. And I'm just wondering what that's going to be. And I wonder how much of that we see Thursday night. The other big talk, of course, this whole offseason is the run game. Now, this D-line for the Rams, right, it's, it's about as good as you're going to face all season. But that's the one thing I look forward to seeing this Thursday. Is it going to be more creative than we saw a season ago? Is the run game going to be a bit more creative, a bit harder to attack than what we got accustomed to last year, which was a lot of just up the gut, a lot of nothing? The other thing I really hope to see on Thursday is getting the running backs involved in the passing game. And I also want to see some short yardage game as well. I saw somebody up in the comments bring this up not too long ago, earlier on in the show, about the yards after catch situation. I think when you're playing a defense as good as you are or as good as the Rams have this Thursday night, 
putting your wide receivers and ultimately your running backs in a position to be able to catch the ball in space and get yards after the catch is critical. You're not going to be able to push the field, you know, deep ball after deep ball as much as you did probably against the Chiefs in this game. The Rams have a better defense, a better backfield. And I don't know if that's how you want to win a game like this. Of course, if that's how you do it and that's how you get it done and it works, hey, what the hell do I care? Do whatever you got to do. I just think going into it, when you look at what the, the Rams do have at their disposal going against this offense, I think it works in the Bills' favor to be able to spread the field, get as many guys involved as possible, especially if Stephon Diggs is going to be that guy that's going to be ghosted by Jalen Ramsey. And then get that short game involved, get that yard after the catch involved, build up the Josh Allen confidence, get him going, get him hot, and see where that goes, and see if that also sparks the run game as well. Just so many elements going into Thursday that have you so stoked.